You're listening to a free audio download from Venue Cymru's International Concert Series. Welcome to the first pre-concert interview from Venue Cymru. Hi, I'm Nick Hardesty and I had the great pleasure of interviewing acclaimed pianist Freddie Kempf alongside my colleague Christina Leong. Our first question for Freddie was, how did winning Young Musician of the Year affect his career and how did he cope with the pressure? At the time, it was you know, Young Musician of the Year was a very, a very big thing, and it was um, obviously it was very exciting at the time to win it. But I think back then, I really didn't know what the effects of it would actually be. Um, now that I look back on it, I, I sort of realised that it really, in my case, it really did throw me into the deep end of, of um, I mean, quite a substantial UK career at the time. Um, and it wasn't so much that I wasn't ready as a musician, but maybe I wasn't ready just as a um, as a human being for for the industry itself. Yeah. Mo- mostly in the sense that um, um, obviously it was very clear to me what I had to do on the piano, but everything else that I had to do in terms of um, dealing with people, dealing dealing with with people in the industry, that that was not explained to me, and I only had my parents um, and. Also, my teachers, who also were not part of, of this whole machine. So, yes, you could say, well, I made a few mistakes. I probably may may have upset a few people, or may have not acted in you know the most. I wouldn't say I was unprofessional, but in the most um, beneficial way to myself yeah. at the time. Um, but what it did give me was a wonderful kind of experience to be able to, you know, to play many of the the major works piano concerti with. You know, famous orchestras in this country, and um, and so looking back on it now, it, it it does feel very much a sort of um, a mini career before the real career started. But because of that, it gave me, you know, almost a trial run before I started doing international work, um, in in the sense when things really did matter. You participated in the Tchaikovsky competition um, in 1998. Can you, I mean, add anything about how this affected your career? Yeah, I mean, from my point of view, everything was happening very gradually. Um, I think after the Young Musician of the Year, then, I mean, I, I did have um, a sort of pretty much a full time career in terms of the sort of workload that I had at, at the time. Um, and then, already from the age of 15, I did actually start. Other, um, other international competitions. Yeah. I started with one in, in Zurich, which uh, didn't go badly, but I didn't I didn't win it. And um, and then I did quite a few. I did I did the leads actually back in uh, was it 1996, and I didn't get through the first round simply because, um, in spite of my piano teacher begging me to play him what I wanted to play in the first round, I kept putting it off and saying, oh, you know, it's. Uh, um, I'm not practicing yet. It's, it, the, the weather's too nice outside, and then eventually, it sort of turned up, um, or um, realized that I was just not going to be ready on time. But still went, hoping that things might go all right. But yeah. you know, in competitions, if things can go wrong, they tend to go ten times worse than you expect them to. Um, so the Tchaikovsky competition was sort of the first time I really kind of I'd had enough of going to competitions and not being ready. And I, that this time, I really thought I'm going to really work hard, you know, from a year before the competition, I'm going to pick strong pieces rather than just picking new things that I'd like to try out. I'll, I'll, I'll use music and um, concertos that I've already played before. Um, so I think for me it was it was really the first one where I, I really felt ready and yeah. there was a real sense of purpose for it. Um, and then um, luckily, I mean, it, it went very well. Um, and it was then only the next day when it was publicly announced that I guess that um, whereas originally I'd been thinking okay well I, the next competition's in July uh, in Spain and I better get on with you know practicing the stuff for that um, it was only you know after after results were announced that we realized um, that there was a much stronger reaction happening um, and then after that simply I guess it sort of turned into a career I mean in, in the sense that the uh, um, just my manager at the time using the publicity from the competition was getting far better results than you know that we could hope for even though I, if I'd say 
won a first prize at the Leeds competition. You know, we were getting sufficient interest from from orchestras, so so it sort of started yeah. off from there. You've recorded quite widely with different composers. I'm wondering whether you um, like to specialise sometimes. I think, I mean, when I was younger, I did try not to specialise. I was yeah. sort of actively trying not to do that. Um, and so when I did start recording with uh, with this Swedish record company, mm. BIS, then I sort of made a point that I would not repeat composers. But, um, I mean, I think that it's, you know, you never really know where your career is going. And for whatever reason, then, um, I guess that my career seemed to tend towards doing recitals and then simply because more and more people want to come and hear them then it would mean larger venues and then um, if you're working in larger venues then the venues don't want you to play you know repertoire which might turn half the audience away so I think just as a result of that you know with programming and just how how this tends to work then maybe I'm sort of now you know I, I do tend to do a lot of the mainstream repertoire a lot of Beethoven a lot of the time um, it's all kind of, I guess I've been pigeonholed by the industry, not not so much because I want it to be like that. Um, for instance, in Japan, um, the the old, um, it's now passed away, the German pianist Wilhelm Kempf was very, very famous out in Japan. And so the, the Japanese concert industry sort of tried to sell me as his reincarnation. So I, mean, I think I think I've played... <laughs> I think I've played the the Emperor Concerto there at least twice a year, every single every single year. Um, so it'd be nice not to play that one time. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think you would play different music if you if you had well the choice, as it were? I think so, but I mean, I really enjoy playing you know recitals in larger venues, and I've been lucky enough to play recital here. And I think I would rather do that, you know, rather than you know playing some obscure piece of music which would also be difficult to learn in the first place. Do you have a particular influence? Is there a pianist, a conductor, a composer? Um, it's hard to say. I mean, I remember the, the first pianist that I really I really liked when I was young, I guess, was, um, was Horowitz. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess... Um, I don't know, it's a tough one, because my I had a piano teacher from the age of six till the age of 14, uh, Ronald Smith, and he'd, he really wanted to teach me to be independent. He wanted to, to show me how to learn a piece by yourself, you know, rather than him spoon-feeding me everything, and then once you know, I'm out of college and I don't have an official teacher, I wouldn't know what to do. So he always tried to make me learn a piece. He said, don't listen to anyone, try and learn it yourself first, and then... You know, once you've played it to me and I'm happy that you've come up with something yourself, then you can start listening to other people. So that's kind of forced me to be very independent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think now when I when I do tackle new repertoire, I tend to think much more of... Um, I mean, a new piece I've been doing has been the, the Goldberg Variations by Bach. And I've been trying to um, imagine how Bach himself would have would have tackled that piece, given the, the modern Steinway piano. Um, you know, rather than thinking of other performers who have, you know, have, have played that work. So I think it's a, it is a very personal thing. Mm 